If you want to turn your phone into a monitor for your Sony camera, then check out Monitor Plus. I'm going to give you 21 reasons that are really good about it and four reasons against it. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly when to use it and when to definitely not use it. This is all from my experience of using it in the field. So stay tuned. So you've downloaded Monitor Plus onto your smartphone. You open up the app. And in the top left hand corner where it says connect via QR code, you click on that. You scan your QR code and just select um, to reconnect automatically next time. Um, you can close the app um, or you're in. But next time you go to use this app, just go to your Wi-Fi, look for your uh, camera and select it. And then it will tell us um, that it will connect without internet. So that's all good. Go back to the app, just restart it. And it's automatically gone through as you can see. And now we're completely into the app. As you can see from this screen recording, that I'm actually got another camera over here and we've got the um, monitor app connected to that. So now I can adjust all the settings uh, to that camera. I can start record, stop recording. So I'll start recording now. And as you can see, that's recording. And now I've got um, all the functions to make any adjustments to that camera straight here through the app. So I can change my frames per second here. I can change my uh, shutter speed and the iris, the f-stop, we can adjust those, the ISO. So we can either um, go right and left here or we can just drag the slider up. I can see I've got it on a Kelvin setting here. Let's get rid of that. And a Kelvin setting there for four. We can change that. Auto focus um, with a manual mode and the focus area. Every setting that we've got on the camera is all in here. Um, and what's lovely about this is also along the bottom here, you can see at the moment I've got focus peaking on, so I can take that off. Um, I've got the zebras here. You can see them showing up and there are loads of functions along here for you to experiment. Flipping the screen, which I find really super useful. Um, where is it? Flipping the screen, super useful when I'm using it on a gimbal and I've got it really low to the ground and I want to look down at the monitor, but I want it the right way up to my eyes, my head, the way I see it. I can just touch that. Fantastic. Um, We've got false colors functions here to show us whether um, we've got any overexposed areas. We've got the RGB settings, um, all the, the color profiles are all here. Along here, lock the screen um, and uh, false colors, really useful. Um, you can see again, overexposed areas. Um, I won't go through all the functions here, but you can even load LUTs onto this. Um, and if you're connected to your Mac, for example, as I am, you can literally airdrop a LUT straight onto this. And, um, you know, if you're filming in S-Log3, for example, uh, you could just drop the LUT on and you'll see what you'll be getting. Um, really handy. At the end here, um, we've got uh, the three little dots where you've got a, um, the pop-out screen and you've got all your um, buttons there for your peaking zebras where you can flip it. Um, you've got a focus puller on here as well, which is a really nice little touch where you can just use the slider. And um, let's see if I can just give you a little. Uh, guidelines are really nice. We can switch guidelines on or off. Now, what I quite liked is you can reorder these because there's some you're going to use more often than others. And often when you're using uh, things like this in the field, you want these buttons uh, super accessible. So I've ordered them. So as you can see here, I've got um, peaking zebra uh, at the top. And uh, that means that along the bottom here, 
um, the first things I've got control of is the the peaking. Um, well, I put on what I call I put on the reds, <laughs> so I can check that I'm in in sharp focus. And again, the zebras I find super useful. It's just a very quick visual um, guide to see um, if you're burnt out or um, you're in or out of focus. Um, so those are like really super helpful. Um, so going through some of the things that I really um, like and dislike about um, using this app. So I'll go through the, 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 the pros. I've got 21 of them. So um, I'm sure I could probably think of others as we go. Um, but let's just dive into that very quickly. Um, one of my favorite ways of, of, of using this, this app is to put it onto uh, a gimbal because um, there's no cables. Um, so it's, it's fast and easy to do that. Using it on a gimbal, the fact that you don't have to have cables. I've got a list here, so I'm going to have to have to cheat because I don't remember them all. Um, really handy for framing a shot. So typically I've used it for this camera over here. Uh, and, you know, as you can see, um, I've made sure I'm positioned correctly. Um, you know, for that, really handy especially in this environment where you're filming yourself um, on a gimbal as I've said you can get right down low uh, and even when you're low you can flip the screen um, by just touching that one function um, and that's really handy it's not physically turning the screen but just um, the image so that's really helpful um, you can use touch focus so you can see um, here the um, square on my eye. It's using eye autofocus. Um, so that function works still and works perfectly through here. Um, so I can touch the screen and uh, if it's for any reason lost focus on me or the object I want, touch focus and uh, it will lock in on that. So that's really nice. Um, of course, you know, uh, the ability to um, show the focus peaking, the zebras we've talked about. Um, I'm down to number eight already, false colors, really helpful and useful. Um, number nine, I've got um, to be able to record without touching camera. So if you're, um, you know, using a gimbal, you don't want to start prodding your camera. Um, or you know you're, you're, you're holding your gimbal carefully and steadily and you can just touch the screen to um, start and stop recording I think that's really useful um, I love that function about it um, you can um, easily get to all those um, functions to be able to make any adjustments so especially if you're out in the field the lights changing um, and you're suddenly the situation is changing and you need to make a fast quick adjustment all the functions are there and especially if it's on a gimbal you don't want to start playing with the camera um, you've got every single function there um, now just a caveat there say every function on the free version you haven't got all these functions I'm showing you. Um, the paid function, uh, the paid version is uh, in the UK £18 a year. So um, you get the basic version, um, which is great. So to try it out, play with it. Uh, if you want to dive into um, all those other false colours and um, all that information, uh, you need to have the paid version. So for 18 pounds, you know, where you could be paying 500 pounds for, for um, you know, a black magic or something like that, then I think, um, you know, you, you're <laughs> well worth spending your money on this. Um, so what do we got? Um, the recording, um, seeing adjust all the settings, um, making quick changes to ISO, shutter speed, F stops, of course, talked about that. Um, so when you're on a location, to be able to activate a second camera. So as I have done, well, in the studio here, um, I've activated this other camera. So I'm now recording on that one. I've made all my adjustments on, on this camera and um, I've controlled all that from the uh, phone screen here, from the Monitor Plus app. So that's really useful. I haven't got to get up, walk around 
and then start um, turning it on and off, etc. Um, so I've, that's immensely handy. I can just have it here in front of me. Um, so yeah, another thing I really love about this is again, if you're traveling, you don't need extra kit. You've always got a phone with you. Um, so you haven't got to like have extra batteries, extra, you know, an, an extra monitor, cables, you haven't got to have any of that. So for the quick, ease, lightweight, fantastic. Um, so uh, that's number 13, but I almost gave you 13A, B and C there, I think. So um, studio filming, um, you know, uh, as you can see in this example, um, where you know I'm doing this desk demonstration desk stand demonstration um, I had the monitor there so I could just make sure um, the desk stand wasn't out of frame um, I'm still you know positioned correctly in relationship to it framing a shot again when you're in the studio um, adjusting the exposure exact the focus the recording um, to control a second, third, second or third camera when you're in a studio. So I'm controlling my second camera here. Um, or if you're working with other people, so you know, you're out on, out on another job on location, you've got another camera operator on another camera, uh, but you need to just uh, manage their shot angles, etc., or even any of their functions. You could be linked up in this way uh, and either see or adjust anything that's going on uh, for wherever you are so that's really uh, super helpful another function i really like with this is um it's a weird thing with sony cameras and with a lot of other cameras actually that when you attach a monitor the back screen goes off so it's kind of like you have to have one or the other um the, there are some there is a work around a way a work around around it um but with this that doesn't happen they both still work does it matter well on a gimbal sometimes it does because you'll often you'll have your um, a screen and a monitor um, at different angles so uh, if you're doing a low shot or a high shot you've always got one of them that work and um, so uh, with this that's great so they're, they're both active screens so I, I love that about it um, and that's really key um, so that's one of my favorites to be fair uh, so that's 21 pros uh, I've given you. So the cons with this, um, just a few, but they are very, um, very relevant, relative, relevant. Um, the connection does drop off. So it's not necessarily a problem. I just close the app, reopen it, um, and it's fine. It's just glitches, but over a whole day, you know, that might happen two or three times. It's not a deal breaker. Um, especially not for the type of work that I do that's not a deal breaker but it does happen so uh, you'll just get a suddenly a froze screen and uh, none of the functions coming through um, reconnecting it, it doesn't sort of refresh the screen so I need to just shut it down and reopen it a um, bit of a lag so um, I know a lot of people in a lot of reviews have said how great the latency is um, to be fair, you know, there is lag. Now you can cable connect it and, you know, reduce that right down. But the whole beauty of this is, you, you know, you don't, you can you can use it at a distance away, um, which is fantastic. Um, but that's just a thing to be um, aware of. So that's why, you know, I didn't really bother with the um, pull focus function. Uh, as cool as that is, uh, and in some circumstances that could be really useful. Um, but in my experience of using this, um, because of that latency, um, it just is not really relevant or possible uh, to do the pull focus function. Another one of the main th considerations is it does drain your mobile phone battery. So I'll always take a spare battery pack with me and um, make sure it breaks that uh, I've just connected that up to the phone uh, just to make sure um, you know it's not draining the battery because you'll get halfway through a day and your phone you know because the screen's been on the whole time um, the batteries will be low or, or, or on the way out so you know those are some times when I would definitely not use it um, but I've found for the 
quick and easiness of using it um, makes it a real winner for me. But that wouldn't stop me from still having um, a monitor that I'm connecting up um, for that stability and pull focus uh, and for the environments when I do need it. Um, so it's horses for courses. Uh, like with many of these things, it's having the, the right bit of equipment at the right time on the right job. So just bear that in mind. So that's it. That's a wrap. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.